Welcome back. I wanted to have a couple of videos where I could explain some examples that I didn't have the time to in the main video to cover. In this video we're going to be discussing a voltage fighter with three resistors in it. For this example problem, what we're trying to figure out is how much voltage there is across R1, which is acting as our knob resistor, and how much voltage there is across R2 and R3 combined, which is acting as our load. We're then going to figure out how much current there is going through each component and the power consumption of our knob resistor, R1, and our load, R2 and R3 combined. To start off, we have these two resistors in series, which we know how to combine using our equivalent resistance for series equation. So we can combine them as shown. Adding their values together, we get a 2 kilo ohm resistor. You can see with this, we can create almost any resistor we want by putting two resistors together. So now we can use our voltage divider equations from the video that involve two resistors in order to determine the voltage across each component separately. Now, in this case we have a 2 kilo ohm load, which means that we can determine what the voltage across those two resistors are combined. Plugging in numbers, we see that we get 1 volt across the R1 resistor and 2 volts across the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in series. Now, solving for the current through each component, we can use Ohm's Law. Notice that each of these, while they're all different components, comes out to the same current. We'll find out in the third video on Electronics Fundamentals that this is due to Kirchhoff's current law. Now that we've done a few calculations, I want to give you an alternative interpretation of the voltage divider. If you take our equation, where the voltage source is equal to the voltage across the first resistor, plus the voltage across our equivalent resistor, the two in series, we see that a third of the voltage go from the voltage source goes to R1, and two thirds of the voltage goes to our equivalent, or our load. Now. What this is essentially telling us is that by choosing our resistors, we can force what percentage of the voltage goes to which part of the circuit, which is why it's handy to have a knob resistor to choose how much voltage the load's going to get. By increasing the resistance of R1, we can move the voltage from our load resistor, our equivalent, to R1, and thus reducing the amount of power that the load resistor, our equivalent here, would consume. This is how we're able to use R1 as a design knob to determine the brightness of our LED in our flashlight circuit. Now multiplying in current, we get a similar equation for power, where we see that not only can we control how much voltage is going to be across each component, we can control where the power is going in our circuit. This is the weighted average interpretation of the voltage divider, where your chosen resistances dictate how much power is distributed to each part of your voltage divider circuit. So I always think it's good to not just do the calculations, but also the experiment to confirm that the theory is accurate. So what I've set up here are three one kilo ohm resistors and a buck converter as a voltage source that's supplying 3 volts. Right now we could see that we're measuring the voltage across the two resistors as the load, and we've got 2 volts across them. Now if we hook up our multimeter to the knob resistor, we should see 1 volt, like we calculated. So, it's nice to see that the theory is this accurate. And it's always a good feeling when your calculations end up being this close to what the actual circuit is being measured as. Now we can also measure the current, and we should see that it's about 1 milliamp. Alright, so I've switched my multimeter to current mode. We're measuring on the screen milliamps right now, and we're seeing that we're getting 0.98 milliamps, which is only two hundredths of a milliamp off from being the calculated one milliamp that we determined. 
Now, that means that there's one milliwatt going across our first resistor, and then two milliwatts to be being consumed by our two load resistors. Now, we can also measure the current consumed by the two load resistors. So now we're measuring the current from the two load resistors and we see that it's 0.99 milliamps which is exactly the same as what we measured earlier which confirms that the current through the loop is the same all the way throughout the loop. Let me know in the comments if there are any examples you are interested in seeing. And if I have time for it, I might make a video about it. I'll see you in the next video.